Oh, I love Amy. She's cute. Amy, just to confirm, my brain is late at night here. Um, Amy was the best friend, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I loved her. She was so endearing. And she had some really good nuggets of pearls of wisdom of like when he was having that internal crisis of I'm in love with an iOS and it doesn't have a body and people are starting to look at me weirdly and my ex called me out saying that I'm a freak and blah, blah, blah. And how she's like, you know what you realize you're here for only a short amount of time. So what's the difference? Be happy. Like, like she said, I'm not in the relationship, so I can't tell you if it's real or not. And I think that goes for, even if it's a physical person, right? Um, like, other people can't tell what it's like to be in your relationship only you can so if it's real to you and it's significant to you that's all that really matters and so i think she had some really beautiful nuggets of wisdom but also she's like i love all the characters she plays because she's just got this lovable cute like you just want to i don't know wrap her up and protect her and be her best friend quality about her i don't know just the way her face looks i don't know i don't know how that works but she has this yeah, this sweet, endearing quality. But obviously, also her character showcased in another relationship where I think you find another person that you appreciate and you respect, but you may not necessarily work well in a romantic relationship. And again, to that point that when you don't bring the best out of each other and how she was commenting that she broke up over something stupid like the shoes were somewhere. And I think we've, if you've been in a relationship before, you'll know there's a stupid argument that's over really not about the shoes. It's about control or like power dynamics or, you know, being able to listen, not listen, whatever. And like just that whole dynamic as well, that it lasts too short to be in a, in a space where you bring yourself misery. And yes. realistically, when you're in a bad relationship, again, this is just my assumptions, you're also responsible for being in that relationship. And if you know it's not working and you're bringing yourself down, and also you're allowing yourself to be in a space you bring yourself down, you're kind of doing it to yourself. Like you have to take some responsibility. And I think it was nice watching her go, look, it's time to separate. And you're here for a short amount of time. You owe it to yourself and the other person to be happy. At the ultimate. Like, that's, that's all that life should be about. Finding people that make you happy, that make you curious and excited about life. And like the iOS, he, was, he loved the iOS because she was so curious and excited about life. Exactly, sometimes yes. I think we get in a rut. We mention it, like pressures. she's yeah. interested in life. Life. Yeah. And that's, I think when you find the right person, they make you excited about life again. And when I think when you, I haven't had kids, but from what I've observed, because I do a lot of kids entertainment, kids have that quality too, where they make you excited about life again, because you see everything through their eyes and everything is so new and so shiny and so wonderful. So yeah, I loved her character because she was, she just had some nuggets of wisdom from, someone who recently broke up to someone that was still dealing with a breakup a year later. So it was a nice juxtaposition of the two ways of approaching the breakups. He was like holding on and yeah. she was like, nah, I'm ready to live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what I liked about this character was that she was a true friend to yes. Theodore because it doesn't matter when she was married or she went through a broke up to a breakup. In any case, she was such a good friend. It was, uh, kind of consistent and that's why that's what I really liked about it because you know these days when you are a friend with someone and when they get married they have different behavior suddenly the dynamic of your relation changes but for Amy it didn't matter in any yeah. case she was a true friend that's what I really I loved about her character she's like my idol like that's now my new benchmark I need to step up because you know We've all gone through periods where things in life take over and you're like, you know what, I'm being a shitty friend, I need to live up to Amy's standard. <laughs> because, yeah, you're right. She was consistent and she called him all the time. She checked in on him. She still valued his opinion. You know, like that was a really nice dynamic. And even though they had no romantic, or maybe at the end of the film they did, who knows, um, <laughs> but throughout they were friends, yeah. do you know what I mean? And they, yeah, they said they like, dated 100 right. once, but it, it, didn't, it didn't feel right. It was like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> which happens but it doesn't yes. mean that you know you have respect for a human being for a different reason true and uh she really cared about uh, her friend theodore and that was very interesting because you know even when uh theodore was uh, down totally depressed she was trying to bring her bring him back to life by inviting him to gatherings or something like that 100 percent, and i think everyone can take that away that don't turn your back on your friends if they go quiet or if they're, they're going through a difficult period, like make an effort.
Like you never know what that one phone call, yeah, they might not take you up on it. Yeah, they may not um, respond, but you don't stop trying because one day, or even the act of trying, like that, that little glimmer of light that keeps pushing them to just get up the next day, the next day, and then one day they will take you up on the offer. Persistence and consistency, it works every time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. And since you are uh, dealing directly with uh, patients who are uh, suffering from cancer, you know that uh, they have depression. Many of them get depression automatically. So you see that people around them, around them sometimes act differently. Like yeah. they are losing friends just because they get depressed or because they have cancer. Yeah. So what do you uh, recommend to those people around them, how they should behave in such cases? Be a Amy, for example. Yeah. Be Amy, 100%. But I think it's a really hard thing to be around people that have terminal illnesses if you have never been in that environment before because each person who's going through that journey has a completely different experience. Some people just want to feel normal and I think the act of everyone bubble wrapping them and tiptoeing around them, that causes them to be depression because the one thing they crave is just to live life and just because everything else in their life is unnormal now. They want that one thing with their friendships and their dynamics to be normal. Um, so making things as normal as possible, like just doing the routine coffee, doing the normal catch-ups, doing making things life as functional as possible, that's the best thing you can offer. Um, but when they are quiet and they are just, you know, a bit different, just accepting that, you know, there's uh, probably a lot of thoughts circulating in their brain that they're having to make decisions about or, you know, their routines are really out of whack. Like if you've ever had chemo treatment or radiation, they don't schedule it regularly because your body will get used to it. So on one day you'll have it at 9 a.m. The next day will be 3 p.m. The other day it could be 12. So it's really hard for them to plan because their life just kind of gets out of sync and just they're reliant on whatever doctors tell them where they need to go. So just being flexible and just being, just going with the flow. And just being normal, like that's all they crave. And they laughter, like people just even as depending on their point of the journey, you know, that they laugh about weird things. They laugh about death. They laugh about, I don't know, shitting themselves, you know, fighting their body, doing just making the body and the functions normal and rocking up. Even if it's a voice memo, just making it look and feel as normal as possible. I think that's the thing that you can do as a friend with people going through depression and just just showing up that's even if you're there to hold their hand like and also ask them because you know most of these people know what they want um don't be afraid to ask them go look this is your journey what do you what do you need from me in this moment like you just tell me whatever you need i'm here for you like even if it's just and sometimes that's it they're like i just needed you to say those words i don't actually don't need anything from you i've got this but knowing that you've got my back that just makes me feel a million times better that if i if i feel like this is too much I got you in my corner. I can. So yeah, it's just be Amy. Just show up. Just exactly. Well show said. up time and time. Be. You know what? That should be a T-shirt. Be Amy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo.